I come to you today with an issue that has long plagued our nation. One that has become a recurring nightmare in Nigeria's academic history. Unresolved and deteriorating relationship between the federal government and the academic staff union of universities, ASU. This conflict, which has dragged on for over a decade, has come at a heavy price to our nation's education system, its students, and the academic professionals who have dedicated their lives to teaching and research. Today, the situation has escalated to alarming new heights, and unless urgent action is taken, the future of tertiary education in Nigeria is at serious risk. Last week, President of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, Professor Emmanuel Osodeke, reviewed the deeply troubling statistics that have sent shockwaves across the academic and civil society communities. Between May and August of this year alone, Nigeria lost 84 university lecturers to death. Let me repeat that 84 members of ASU passed away in just three months. Deaths that were not caused by accidents, pandemics or natural disasters, but by economic hardship. This, my fellow Nigerians, is a stark and sobering reminder of the human cost of neglect. These were individuals who dedicated their lives to educating the next generation, who spent decades researching, teaching, mentoring, and building knowledge for the betterment of our country. Yet, due to circumstances created by the government's refusal to pay their salaries and improve their welfare, they died in abject economic despair. During an interview on China's television socio-political program, Inside Sources, Professor Sodeke did not mince words when he describing the gravity of the situation. He said, in the past three months from May to August 2024, Nigerian universities lost 84 academics to death because of what our people are going through. These 84 individuals were our professors, senior lecturers, researchers, and intellectuals. They were the pillars holding up our universities. Their deaths are not just a loss to their families and the academic community, but to Nigeria as a whole. These were 84 minds that could have contributed to groundbreaking research, economic policies, and the development of young Nigerians. Their loss represents an intellectual and emotional void that will be difficult, if not impossible, to fill. How did we get here? How did we arrive at a point where those taxed with the sacred duty of shaping the minds of our youth are dying because of economic hardship? How is it that in a country with vast natural and human resources, we cannot adequately compensate our educators, the very individuals responsible for the future of this nation? At the heart of this crisis is the federal government's no work, no pay policy. This policy, which was designed to penalize lecturers for going on strike, has instead become a tool of oppression and punishment. Imagine working tirelessly for years, contributing to the academic advancement of your students and reputation of your university, only to have your salary withheld because you exercise your right to protest against poor working conditions. The no work, no pay policy, while appearing to be a solution to the test strike actions, has excavated the crisis by pushing lecturers further into financial desperation. According to Professor Sodeke, despite this crisis, you are holding somebody's three and a half year salary on the no work, no pay policy. I mean, people are trying to survive and everything is gone now. This is a reality for countless university lecturers across the country. They are not asking for luxuries or undue rewards. They are simply asking to be paid what they have worked for, for what they have earned. Yet, the government continues to withhold onto these salaries as if they are playing some form of political chairs, oblivious to the human suffering caused by these actions. The issue of unpaid salaries is just the tip of the iceberg. For years, ASU has been calling on the federal government to meet its demands and honor agreements that were made as far back as 2009. These demands are not unreasonable. In fact, they are necessary if we are to preserve any semblance of quality in our university system. ASU has long been advocating for the removal of its members from the Integrated Payroll and Personal Information System, IPIS, a deeply flawed system that has been riddled with inconsistencies and inefficiencies. They have also called for the payment of outstanding academic allowances, the revitalization of Nigerian universities through better funding, and the release of withheld salaries from previous strike actions. In addition, ASU has consistently demanded the adoption of the University Transparency and Accountability Solution, 
users. A homegrown alternative to EPs, which they argue is better suited for the unique requirements of academic institution. It is important to note that ASU's demands are not self-serving. They are asking for improvements that would benefit not only the lecturers themselves, but also the entire university system, and by extension, the students and the nation at large. The issue of funding for university education has been a long-standing concern, with public universities struggling to maintain basic infrastructure, let alone engage in world-class research. The absence of proper funding has left our universities in a deplorable state, with dilapidated buildings, outdated equipment, and overcrowded classrooms. Nigerian universities, which once held pride of place in Africa, have now plummeted into global rankings as one of the most poorly funded and dilapidated institutions in the country. Let us not forget that education is the bedrock of any society. A country that neglects its education system is one that is setting itself up for failure. How can we expect to develop as a nation if we cannot even provide our students with the basic tools they need to succeed? How can we compete on the global stage when our universities are starved of funds and our lecturers are living in poverty? The government's neglect of the education sector has, has not only crippled universities but has also jeopardized the future of our young people. And now, as we mourn the loss of 84 lecturers, we are forced to confront the very real possibility that if nothing changes, we will lose even more in the months and years to come. To make matters worse, public universities receive a paltry 15 million naira monthly from the federal government as running costs. According to Professor Sedeke, this amount is woefully inadequate, especially in the face of rising utility costs. His universities, he explained, now spend between 200 million naira and 300 million monthly on electricity alone. This staggering disparity has left many institutions with no choice but to divert their internally generated revenue to that should have been used for academic development, research, and student welfare into covering operational costs. This is unsustainable. If universities continue to funnel their scarce resources into paying for basic utilities, where will the funds come from to provide quality education, conduct research, and improve facilities? The answer is clear. They won't. And as long as this continues, our universities will remain in a state of perpetual decline. The time has come for the federal government to stop its RIGMA rule and honor the long-standing agreement with ASU. The government must take immediate steps to resolve these issues once and for all. Failure to do so will not only lead to further loss of life among academic community, but will also set our education system back by decades. Just last month, ASU issued a 14-day ultimatum to the government, demanding that it addresses the outstanding issues, including the renegotiation of the 2009 agreement and the release of withheld salaries. The clock is ticking, and the government's silence on this matter is deafening. We have seen this pattern before. ASU issues an ultimatum, the government remains silent, and then when the strike inevitably begins, the government scrabbles to find a temporary solution that barely scratches the surface of the underlying problems. I mean, we've seen it countless times. The cycle has repeated itself too many times. It is time for the government to break the cycle and take meaningful, lasting action. Education should not be treated as a bargaining chip or a political afterthought. It is the foundation upon which the future of our nation is built. Lecturers across the country have families to feed, bills to pay, and healthcare needs to meet. They are citizens of Nigeria, just like the rest of us, and they deserve to be treated with dignity and respect. The financial difficulties they are currently facing are un unconscionable, and it is the responsibility of the government to ensure that they are adequately compensated for their work. The government cannot continue to allow these men and women to suffer while it wastes resources on unnecessary luxuries and extravagances. The federal government must demonstrate that it values education by honoring its agreements with ASU. The government must stop this evasive tactic and fulfill the promises it made to the lecturers and the Nigerian people. Our universities cannot continue to function under these dire conditions, and the lecturers cannot be expected to continue sacrificing their lives for an education system that has failed them. The time for action is now. This is not just about preventing another strike, it is about saving lives, restoring dignity to our educators, and securing the future of our universities. Nigeria deserves better, and our lecturers deserve better. It is time for the federal government to act, not with words, 
or with decisive action that will end this crisis once and for all. The future of education in Nigeria depends on it. Thank you.